There Why we are. So We're going to do more Korra. Really now, you have seen that it was pre-calc grade four. Somehow made it true. Or whatever your cutoff was when everyone else bombed out. I don't know why I did. It was all voluntary as well. That's the worst part. Oh. I suppose this no. is voluntary as well, Mike. So, yeah. What's wrong? I don't know. <laughs> I wish I knew, Mike. It would certainly help my life if I knew what was wrong with me. <laughs> Smoke up. I mean, in fairness, this casting gig is also voluntary, John. And, you know, you've. you've Made something out of it, so there you go. <laughs> Why do you suddenly grow positive there, Mike? You know? 30 seconds to battle. Oh, I, I was going to say, it's good gonna, old... the casting... I, I was about to say the casting gig is also torturous, but you know? Yeah, I thought I'd go down the positive route. The G2IG. Here we go, both teams running right into each other, Jonathan. I mean, there is a ward down here from, from G2, or rather from Talon. Talon are ready for this. Almost predicting the movement to come from G2IG as they do break the smoke onto Ponyo. Still running towards the banner in area. They really seem to want the fight. Talon eventually will show themselves and that's going to be a bounty. In fact, it looks like Talon might just find all four bounties with the way this has happened. If they rush over to the, the other side of the map, they will just get all four of them. Aggressive here from nothing to say. And Chuen on the Cottle, this is something that he loves to play on the mid. It's so tempo based from Talon though, like this urn timing has to come on every single time you and I watch this Cottle. That urn has to work out. They've already blocked the camp as well, so they know what the Cottle will want to do here. Just prevent Chuen from getting a runaway start, see if they get a read and start to deward that. But they've already lined up quite nicely in G2IG. It's, it's just a matter of nothing to say, balancing out his spacing getting some dodges out, getting some good pokes out while he can with a swash here. Absolutely. Of course, top lane, X Nova. You are going to see him along with Monet against Jokam and WS. You mentioned this earlier, but WS had a, a brilliant time yesterday on the Timbersaw. See if he can replicate that performance here up against G2IG. See, it would be fantastic for Talon if they could get off to a good start here for this game based off the Timber. But now, though, laning stage-wise, it does feel like it's probably going to be a relatively easy time for Monet in terms of at least just hitting creeps. Yeah, it's not going to be the toughest. He is short-range enough that if he does come too close to the creep wave, whirling death will be an issue. And so far, WS isn't really able to leverage that just yet. And with the Disruptor support, you're not really going to be looking to play too much of the repositioning until Glimpse is at a healthy level. Let's see if that's something they want to consider. And the last lane we haven't really looked at, of course, down bot Akashi already getting a lot of hits out from JT, as you'd expect. He does have the Hammer of Purity and Purification. There's not really much Akashi can do can, to stop that free harassment. And we're also seeing Baboka was lining, trying to find something like a pull, or at least just blocks the camp with his body. It does at least ensure that there are no pulls to come out. And This is not going to be the best of times for Akashi. Again, he can just sit back and farm for the most part, but... There's no real synergy with Deuce of Phoenix. Like, it's not a lane where you can really play off with the slowest and the burn all too well. These are fairly tanky heroes on the side of G2IG. You've got even the choice of Repel down the line, if it does get a little bit dicier. So it's just gonna be passive farming. As long as Akashi, I suppose, doesn't cop too much damage, you're happy coming out of this lane, but it can just change in a swing really fast, especially as nothing to say approaches six. That's where the threat really comes in here. Absolutely. Things going pretty swimmingly here for, for nothing to say in that mid lane. Just 14 and 4 in terms of CS. No real harassment coming his way on the Pangolier. Of course, Chuen just trying his absolute best to rush towards the urn and, and start getting those charges up. Bottom lane, a little bit of trading happening at the bottom lane, but it, it's an Omni Tiny. Like, chances are you are not going to get the kill as a Medusa and a Phoenix. It just feels like there's so much pressure uh, on this mid lane of talent. Like, Chuen just needs to really get this urn quick as possible and start to get those charges up. We have seen these mid coddles pop off a lot if they can get those early timings. But on, this, on the same kind of hand, we've, we've seen coddles that just get no charges for the first 20 minutes and just do nothing. 
can fall really flat really fast if you're not careful here. At least Chuen, again, he has the fall back to the jungle. He manages to clear out the ward. We'll try to de deny off as well to ensure that it stays open for him. And he is getting some good stacks, so some steady form for the Cothel still, although the lane, again, is under nothing to say his control completely at the moment. Top lane, a little bit of aggression onto Mune, but it's just really hard to commit under the tower to threat the techies with a blast off turn. Still, this is the best lane coming out for Talon so far. WS Mansion pull ahead pretty well, keeping Monet down as much as possible. Again, that close range of Luna doesn't bow to a very strong laning experience up against the Timber Saw, at least in safely CSing. Baboka, dropping pretty low here at that bottom lane. Mystic Snake is not going to bounce to the tiny. Avalanche is going to make sure that Ponyo can't get within range and Baboka is barely going to survive. A little bit unfortunate for Akashi because he did try with that Mystic Snake, but just wasn't in range for the bounce. Yeah, it just he hasn't had that much luck at all with these bounces, even just controlling the lane, trying to get it to bounce to JT. Really good spacing coming out from G2 IG overall, knowing the shortcomings of that Dusa. Even though theoretically up against melee, it shouldn't be too hard, but yeah, it does yeah, cut away to some of that bite the Dusa wants to have in the lane. Still, steady farm coming in for Akashi. Already has the arcane boots, so isn't going to be as easy to burst down. It's a mana regen and burst mana to play with as well. But you're also not keeping JT too far back. Again, this Omni Knight, double bracer up, phase boots coming out next, 202 in the skill build, has a lot of damage to play with already. Just needs uh, maybe some opportunity. Tell them they're the ones lining up on mid, just taking a gander here with Ponyo, but and the Phoenix rotation. Oh, Monet. Top lane, they're trying to get aggressive onto the Lunar. Manet is going to have the assistance of the, the stun from X Nova, but WS still able to secure the kill. He may just die to nothing to say, but looking to chain towards the north here. WS still has his own way out. Swash is going to land from nothing to say, but it's still not quite enough damage. Shield Crash, however, will do the job. But if you're WS, you're still pretty happy with that. You do find the position one Lunar. That is uh, well worth his time and his death. And we're talking about this timing for nothing to say to rotate onto Akashi. With the attention up top that gives Akashi more space bot to work into higher levels, to maybe consider a value point from the Stone Gaze. And he's even getting some good chip damage onto JT now, left alone. Good body blocks, a few pokes. Nothing too much. Again, a kill for Akashi Soul is not something feasible, but it's a lot more space for Dedusa than you'd expect coming out of this laning phase. We talked about how durable an Omni Knight and a tiny would be, but Baboka's attention has to be brought elsewhere. And left alone, the Dusa can just sustain quite nicely here. I mean, Akashi is having the time of his life, that's for sure. Just no pressure at all against this Medusa. Thing is, you are approaching that, that stage now where, where nothing to say is going to have the Diffusal Blade up, so he's going to be able to drain through the mana pool of the Medusa quite easily. It's probably the, uh, the spike they're looking for to try and deal with Akashi, though as I say that, Tossback is out from Baboka, but Akashi's just going to go right for the TP away, and he will make it just fine. It gets pretty low on mana, but not low enough. Not quite. That does give maybe a little bit more room out now for Talon to consider other movements. See Chuen heading up top, has that urn, wants to get a charge going if they somehow find a reposition. Level 2 Glimpse ready to help them set up for that as well. But good vision here from G2IG. Just have this nice forward ward by the tier 1. Yeah, that good ward by the ramp down bot as well to spot out the movements from Ponyo earlier. Just preventing Talon from trying to capitalize on that early timing with a Cotl. Like you said, he's, the Urn has to find some charges. If he doesn't manage to get the jump, then it just doesn't feel like the Cotl has a lot of presence in the mid game. I mean, still looking around, it's, it's, this is the depressing part about mid coral if you can't get those charges up. It just means you're really completely useless. You still have a look around. Here's out the mid creep wave. Plenty of stacks still to be pet taken here for Chuen. So, you know, you can just continue working towards the Spirit Vessel. Meanwhile, Akashi is going to run right into Baboka. They'll toss into Mane, who is just casually waiting in the tree line. So a beautiful setup onto Akashi. He comes nothing to say. A blast off will land onto, and Akashi is just deleted. Completely deleted, but can G2IG get the rest of their heroes out of it? Looks like Baboka may just fall here to WS, and nothing to say. No, he's the big target, and they've got him. Oh, 
They will find a two for one trade. No, it might even be a third as WS is still chasing down Maboka. Has the chakram available now, just needs to close the gap. And eventually, he will catch him with that chakram. Gets the glimpse back here with the disruptor. And WS setting up a third kill for the team. And sure, you got a Kashi down, but the, this Timberstall, you don't want to give this guy this much golden XP. He is he is a problem when it comes to this hero. What does that mean? Yes. We need a translator. What is Maboka saying? Somebody tell me. <laughs> All WS can say is, haha. We will run it by translation, Mikey, when we've got time. Still, Town mentioned to rally off the back of that. Akashi does manage to buy out the Yasha anyway, so he's still in a good position to keep that farm game going. And you can see how much it takes to commit onto him with those Arcanes. Had a little bit of flash mana, had a full stick. They had to go through his mana pool so much, it felt like the blast off didn't do much at all. Once it's true though, it does just, the Medusa does just melt. Smoke out from Town. They've got charges up, full spirit vessel for Chuen. could find Manet. It's just Giant a dream, right? Attack. Look, running right into the Luna, but they will run north instead, looking throughout the top jungle, not expecting Manet to be farming the uh, the actual die jungle. And Manet, he's going to leave at the right moment as well. Realizing Akashi. they are around the area, he will just kind of go toward that oh, die no. triangle. Meanwhile, Akashi, he will not Oof. do the same. Sadly, Akashi probably just going to die, though does get the stone gaze off in time, and in fact, never mind. Still not dead, though nothing to say, looking for the chase, but does decide better off. Very close call there for Akashi, but he will barely make it out with his life intact, as now JT going to find himself in a spot of danger, but well, sadly for Talon, there's just no stunts to cancel the TPs off. Yeah. They do manage to at least I, uh, drag some tension back, huh? I, I just realized, John, the only way to cancel a TP is, is Stone Gaze or Glimpse here with, uh, yes. with Talon. They've, they've got nothing yes. else. And nothing goes through debuff and UT outside of Stone Gaze. So uh -oh. once you repel up or BKB up, yeah, you don't have many answers. The side of Vice should be nice, but again, BKB repel just kind of ruins that. Let's see what Talon will want to do. They get the glimpse back on the on X Nova at the very least. They do X Nova. Definitely no has no way out of this. We'll go down. With WS again, he's just finding too much, I think, off this map. Already 3 1 and 2 in terms of kill score, but more importantly, top of the net worth board here on the Timber. And we've seen over and over again what this man does when it comes to the Timber Storers. Or mid lane now, Maboka. Gonna be caught out. Beautiful glimpse back from Joe Cam and Chuen. He'll put the hand up. And this is kind of the, the keeper of the light game you like to see if you're Chuen. You know, just, just unlimited spirit vessel charges, easy kills with the glimpse backs. And just having the, the time of his life here on that, that mid-keeper. Yeah. He is starting to get that ramp up. Really great synergy with Solar Bind and the Glimpse. It's an easy way to lock heroes in. Still have some good stacks coming in as well for Talon. So Akashi has some great catch-up if that is to be given to him. Still here in bot area for Akashi. And it's still not the most protected. No forward vision. This tier 1 still stands to be fair. So it's a little bit harder for G2IG to sneak past. Comparison, Monet, with the Mask of Madness, is still keeping pace with Adusa, though. You know, you're not really eclipsing with all of the space just yet for Adusa. And then you, you Luna, happy enough to play along here as well. And it just feels like, despite going 62 right now for Talon, G2 IG are still in a really strong position. You're not, you're not ahead nearly enough on Talon's end. Your power spikes are starting to line up really strongly, though. High on WS, the burst damage is there. It just begs the question, like, what do you Omni Knight on hand? How do you deal with Repel? How do you deal with the Rolling Tundra? From nothing to say, you can't stop it. You can't stop any of that. So they have to play while they're strong here, I'm telling you. It's Nova. He's going to have the TP rotations coming in from his teammates, so he will not die quite yet, but it is a hell of a lot of damage being dealt to the poor techies. It seems like Talon, they will just retreat. Them. That is a lot of rotations committed, however. So G2 IG just trying to stem the bleeding a little bit against Talon, and you, you can't quite blame them. This is a huge power spike timing now for Talon. Kind of like you, you want to play defensive, but you also just want to ensure that no real free kills go the way of Talon anymore, because they have been getting away with quite a lot. 
Yeah, I think it's the right read from G2IG. Just prevent any losses towards the side of town. Because they will feed off of these pickoffs quite well. It, it, it is their major power spike. You know, your Dusa still needs some time to cook up, but I don't think it kind of combines all too well. Right? Like, again, like, how do you deal with of all of these debuff immunity with this kind of lineup? It just doesn't feel clean for Talon. Maybe a nullifier can come out for Akashi in this kind of build. It does feel almost necessary to at least stop the Guardian Angel and Repel. Let's see if that's something that Akashi will cook up later on after the Manta. Meanwhile, One already has a Dragon Lance along with a Mask of Madness. Talon trying again with a smoke. Chuen and Jokam. Try to get that chase. They've got to travel to Chuen as well to show up if anything happens, but. There's the techies oh. effect. The mines come off, and what do you really do with a smoke? It's kind of the thing, eh? It's just too strong, these proximity mines. So nothing to say. Still looking to perhaps get caught out here, as the glimpse pack is going to be there. They'll get the static storm oh, as well. Boy. The glimpse, however, ruining it. Oh, a little bit unfortunate there. Joe Kemp tried his absolute best to ensure that Rolling Thunder did not come off, but nothing to say. We'll get it. Instead, into the mid lane they go. TPs are out. They'll see Baboka. Perhaps they can hope to secure his life with a nice little glimpse back. And they will. Baboka trapped up in the kinetic field, though he does get a very nice avalanche off, but it won't matter. WS does move in and clean up a very easy kill for himself on the timber. Yeah. That's a pick off they need here in town. And can any kill to get these openings? To get this game going for their side, even Akashi showing up to help Siege onto that mid-tier one. Try to invade and keep that pressure across the map onto the top lane as well. Again, for the side of G2IG, you're 7-2, but you're only, what, 1k behind? Barely 1k behind, I'm sure. You're still getting free farm for Monet. You've got the defusal off and nothing to say if Akashi does poke his head out. Like, your answers are all here. You've got the Echo Saber fully done for JT. Just needs a shard, and then this Omni Knight will absolutely melt the Dusa as well. It's all lining up, and for Talon, there's a timer here, and that timer just feels like it's ticking closer and closer when this lineup could fall flat if you're not too careful. G2IG, you're just playing the perfect game of patience. There are some good wards here from Talon, right behind that tier 2, but it just feels so hard to capitalize. You've got some great defensive wards still standing here for G2IG as well. He yeah, absolutely do. The 2k advantage still standing here for, for Talon. Ah, uh, she's still ahead of Manet as well, but only just by a little bit. Manet is still having a, a decent enough time here on the Lunar. Understanding his job is to just hit creeps and farm the best he possibly can at the moment. You, you're kind of seeing X Nova as well, just kind of following the Lunar around and just placing mines wherever he goes. You know, just ensuring that there's always some kind of information being provided to Manet just in case they are trying to go for a smoke rotation. Talon, in the meantime, thinking about trying to pressure that mid-tier 2 tower, though it is very, very early for that. Jokam? JT. Well, they'll find X no, Nova crazy. in the Static Storm, but Jokam will just get deleted, as Chuan will at least be able to train. Mines, though, Chuan, he'll clear him out. No problem. He's all right. <laughs> oh, God. That, that is a little bit crazy from good old Jokam. Tries to get the Static Storm onto two, but... It's a little bit on edge to try to keep JT down. Not the biggest kill, but again, if you're Talon right now, you're hunting for every kill that you can possibly find. They're all just so important to try to get this tempo. 2k lead for Talon. Side of G2IG. Again, it's just an arms race. They're still finding farm on Monet, Manta to come next. They're getting the shard into Ags for nothing to say. They've got the shard up for JT. So this Omni Knight's just an absolute menace. And go for a smoke out here in G2IG. And not the most forward vision. Talon did have a lot of wards. But unsure if they actually caught a glimpse of that smoke. We'll see. Here comes the smoke. Ponyo. They want to break the smoke if they do move in. Jump is there. Oh. Boca with a nice avalanche toss back. We'll find the Phoenix. That is one down. There's nothing to say. Immediately out with the Rolling Thunder looking for the back lines. Does find Joe Camp. Though I do not believe can stick around. He has to get out of there because WS is now on the chase. Oh. Nothing to say. He's still trying to get his way out. But a glimpse is available in one. And they do manage to pop it off here onto the Pangolier. Nothing to say. In the middle of nowhere. Does go down. And now the stone case from the high ground. Locking down a couple more. But they do still manage to run their way out. 
Still Talon want to fight. The chase is on. They want a little bit more than just the Pangalier. It seems like they probably will not get it though. I suppose the mid Pango is still a huge pick off and well, they only lose their support Yeah, that, That's actually a major win for Talon. Somehow Mansion get that pick off on nothing to say, just getting enough vision. Really good Thunderstrike coming out from Joe Camp in the middle of the roll to secure that vision for the later part. Ponyo, I mean, taking away the egg is pretty big, but it doesn't feel like the egg's all that important just yet for Talon's team fight. And yeah, there's no synergy with a Sunray anyway coming out. The Phoenix is just kind of the, the best sort of sacrifice to get for information. Again, it's just building off of that great usage of the Thunderstrike there to get the last bits of vision out. Now that position from, positioning from Akash to cut them off. Yeah, major win for Talon. They can try to capitalize off the back if they've got the diffusal up for Akashi going into the Disperser. He's looking for more damage out, but looking for ways to get some Dispel of his own onto himself to bail out. They've still got Egg, and they've still got Static Storm. Jokam didn't have it in the last fight here. Mune. Oh, Mune. Spotted WS. He's found the perfect target. The Glimpse back is not great, but it may not matter anyway as Mune is on the run. Avalanche tossed though from Baboka does manage to secure Joe Cam and well they actually have not picked off Mane either. Mane is still fighting. Nothing to say will intervene now. He's on to Chuen. He's found the Keeper of the Light. Akashi even making his own appearance on the Medusa just in case his team needs it. Rod of Aid tossed out. They're gonna find nothing to say with the lockdown. The chase is on once again for the Pango and nothing to say. Still running. As WS now finding X Nova, oh. meanwhile Baboka canceling his TP, ensuring that his mid lane is able to get away. Baboka will sacrifice himself. Though WS, oh, yes. he, he does not like what he saw. He wants the kill anyway, oh. he will find it. Uh -huh. Screw your sacrifice, WS says. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that's some outstanding coordination coming out from G2IG and Talon. Like, the Rappel just instantly ruins all of what you're trying to do here with that Static Storm. You can't keep them trapped in Kinetic Field. Static Storm, doesn't Spears, debuff immunity. It, it's just, this Omni Knight is really the issue going forward. It's just, losing your support, still not the biggest deal for the side of Talon. And they managed to get a decent usage of the Egg as well to deny the area out from the side of G2IG. And it's really unfortunate for Nuts and Say, it's all of these bad rolls, bad bounces that kind of removes any sort of counterfight for G2IG. Just forced to fully retreat. And again, great read from Paboka to try to buy space for Nuts and Say, but great read from WS as well, just to reposition. And again, this guy in the Timber Saw, it's his, probably his best hero and he's a killer on it. I think probably is, uh, is not the right word, John. It almost feels like it's definitely the right hero here for WS. This man just always seems to perform on the Timber Store every <laughs> single time I watch it at the very least. And Well, Talon, I mean, they're in a spectacular position right now. 3k advantage, but more importantly, it feels like the, the tempo of the game has just been their way ever since the landing stage has just ended. Roshan now looking to be the objective for the side of Talon. And I do not believe G2IG will be around to try and counter this. It does seem like it's going to be a very free Roshan. That does look that way. I think the one big thing for G2IG as well, right? We're talking about all of these saves, talking about the nuisances of the Rolling Thunder and the Repel. When it actually does come out to the team fight, your team fight control is... It doesn't really compare to what Talon has. I mean, they've got Egg, they've got Stone Gaze, they've got Static Storm. Your counterplay oh, is just repelling trying to find there Although, again to camp? pick him off on the Pango. Oh. He's forced to pop the Rolling Thunder just to try and get away from the situation. But Chuen's even there, just in case he doesn't TP away. Though he will. And of course, Roshan was still happening this whole time. Uh, Kashi will happily take that and rejoin his team in the mid lane. And things are just going to get more and more challenging for G2IG. The net worth is, is really nothing. It's only 1k the way of Talon, but it's the way they've been playing this game. It, it just feels like it's just too overwhelming for G2IG at this point. Radiant. 
You shouldn't have you. Can still work against Helm if things start to go south. Still on the hunt with the smoke. They run into Mune, that's a big one. They've got the mines. The mines again. It's kind of the Xnova's literally been following this Luna, placing mines wherever she goes. Which it has been paying off as you can see. Because now Mune can just leave the area and just not get caught out. Which I'm still surprised this hero doesn't appear more often, even if it hasn't been as strong as it once was. Just so much information with these damn proximity mines. Yeah, it kind of makes me miss uh, the old actual green mines now. At least that didn't ring a bell when you were smoked off. And they were they were annoying, but you just smoke around, you could actually play the game. What if we brought the, <laughs> this... the, the green mines back? What if we brought <laughs> Maybe them back it comes they back. did make sounds? Yeah, for, for... Oh, that's the worst of both worlds. It's the best. That, that would actually be so bad. Oh my god. It would still make a ring-a-ding-ding, -ding, but you'd have to manually detonate. And it still well, does the same thing. What if we just thing? got rid of the... We get rid of reactive yeah. taser, make proximity, proximity mines his W, and then just get the green mines back. That solves everything. Rolling thunder, bottom lane. That's Nothing. too much. Nothing You're a save. maniac. Grim's back will not affect him. He's alright. Somewhere Slax is nodding at what I just said, John. No. Somewhere in Birmingham, he's very, very happy with my <laughs> recommendation. DT. Jump is there, mid lane. They found the Omni Knight. <laughs> they cannot kill the Omni Knight, though. I think he's a little bit too tanky. Grim's back is there, though. Maybe I'm wrong, Jonathan. Never mind. Never mind what I said. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. <laughs> Boka. He was back there for a moment. Looks like they were trying to send him across the map. Talon's still in complete control of this game. One. Chuen once again on the hunt. They're going to find X Nova. Nova with the TP away. They completely ignore him anyway. Mane perhaps could be a, a nice target if they want to make their way over, but it's too many heroes around Mane at this point. In fact, G2IG, the one smoked up, willing to go for a big fight. Talon are still grouped up as a unit, though, so it should be pretty damn challenging to find the fight they're looking for. Akashi, though, really frontlining for his team here. But G2IG, they do not want to initiate on the Medusa of all things. They want the backside. They're going to find Joe Camp here in that support disruptor, immediately blowing him up. But here comes WS, making the jump in on Maboka, but they don't have the burst. They'll lose the Disruptor, but that's going to be about it. They'll back the hell out of it. I was like, where do you go from here? Like, G2IG. Well, keep the farm going. I mean, Mane is still doing a fantastic job in terms of the, uh, the farm game. Problem is Akashi is still well and truly ahead and now goes for the eye of Skadi is well, bottom lane, WS. We'll get caught by nothing to save, but it it's he doesn't care. There's just no damage. Top lane perhaps? WS, he knows they're around there somewhere. He'll make the jump in on his own. Maybe going a little bit too far, but no. They TP away from him. They do not want the smoke. Baboka. Ah, uh, Baboka. Ooh. Gets caught. So does X Nova. A nice egg to avoid the uh, the blast off. X Nova almost guaranteed to die. 
And Baboka is also in massive trouble as WS will find another kill for the side of talent. They're, they're finding all of these pickoffs, but again, like the net worth lead is not getting any higher. It's still only 1k. It feels like this timing that you're looking at from town, it, it's still strong, but it's going to start fading away soon. Ag's up on nothing to say. You've got Monet already coming in with a flag for you going for the Conda next. Has the BKB ready to go as well. Got the coverage of Repel. You've got the Conda coming out for JT. Conda. Omni Knight is such a painful timing to deal with on top of all of this. Like, it's just so much output. You've seen WS already melt to those Ag Shard right clicks plus the, plus the hammer flying out. Now, this is all going to scale. Talon, I mean, this is good progress you're making, but they still need to keep going at it. You know? they, they need to take these tier twos. They need to somehow take next Roshan, look for the high ground opportunity. Because if they don't start looking at endgame by 35 to 40, then I think G2 IG still have a clear shot back into this game. They seem to think so too, because they've been more than happy to just sit back and avoid talent as much as they possibly can. As now Baboka, as I say, avoiding them, tries to move in, but is going to get blown up. Baboka trying to run, JT trying to help him out, but it is not looking too good for the side of G2IG because JT now also caught, needs to back out of there. They already lost Baboka, but Baboka's going to try and buy back in the middle of this team fight and rejoin his team. But it seems like G2IG just need to leave. Back towards the base they go. They'll try and get onto Joe oh. Cam, finding the disruptor, but WS looking for Baboka will find him a second time. An immediate tieback for the Tiny. And all they'll really find is Joe Cam on the Disruptor. But it does force Talon to back out of it. Yeah, I mean, they can't take the follow-up fight. They did blow pretty much all their big ult stone gaze plus Static Storm gone. Only the egg, but without any of that to follow up to protect, it's just not a clean 5v5. They're still trying to chase in G2 IG, but you really have to respect the output of WS. Like, once that repel fades, this timber saw is just ripping heads apart. I like the build here for WS as well, going for the Octarine. Or going for the Bloodstone, it looks like. Just wanting to stay in true up front. But all the damage he's doing, you can't really fault him for just looking to be that front line. You've got Chuen working onto his Hex, only about 600 gold away. It's a little bit more much needed control for Talon once that is up. For some reason, there's a Vambrace on the ground. It never gets caught underneath the Sentry Ward there for a second and immediately gets bursted down by WS and Akashi. Onto the high ground they go, Talon. They want to try and pressure this tier 3 tower. G2IG, they will slowly make their way back to try and defend this, but it does seem like Akashi should at least be able to get away with the tier 3. Maybe not going to be sticking around for the racks though, as... Well, he will for now, Akashi. I thought he might wait for a Roshan attempt, but not quite. In fairness, he doesn't really seem like he needs the Roshan at the moment. But once he sees the fortification, that's going to be enough for him to get out. Very conservative, but very clean at the same time. Yeah, I think Talon understands just how important this game is. They're trying to get with, you know, maximize these opportunities as they come. See how far they can get away with things. Smoke out G2IG, but smoke as well from Talon here. This could be massive. Akashi, though. Moving in to potentially break the smoke of G2IG. It's not the Medusa you want to start with, but they have no choice. Oh, Mane, he's going to make the jump in. Or rather run out because WS is on the chase now. Mane, he's forced to pop the Eclipse and try to survive through this onslaught. But it's just so much damage flying in. Mane, he'll just BKB TP out of there. He doesn't want the fight. They'll just lose JT. And that'll be about it for the fight here for G2IG. They just didn't see... The opening they wanted to try and make it go their way. And Akashi, he's been very good with his positioning. He's always just facing forward, making it so they have no way of getting into the back and taking out the support. Yeah, I have to give props to Joe Cam. Like this shard and the disruptor, the thunder strike clipped nothing to say oh. in the smoke. That gave the info, that gave the confidence for WS to come in. That is just insane. I haven't seen that. And that chart is value, but to get that crucial information in that moment, it just gave so much to Talon. You force out the BKB, you find this kill onto JT again. It does feel like he needs he needs a BKB of his own. It almost feels like, right? On top of the repel, he needs more debuff immunity. 
just to tank true from what WS is trying to do here. And the Conda is still going to feel amazing. And he is queuing up that BKB, but it's still a ways off. You saw that just in that replay, the, the choke point for the Static Storm. It's just a horrible position for G2 ID oh, yeah. to, to end up in. And well, like you said, Joe Cam made that fight very easy for the side of Talent. Speaking of easy, Roshan has respawned, so Talon will move right into the Roshan pit. G2IG, understandably, cannot allow this to go for free. So they are going to smoke up as five and rush towards the Roshan. And I believe they will make it in time to try and contest the Roshan has already lost half its HP, so they don't really have any time to think about. It. Nah, they've got their own pseudo mines. There's Thunder Strikes down, oh, at least to watch the plant called Oh, just a bit too Joe late. Camp. Did get the Roche banner. Static Storm will be there. Joe Camp already going down. WS trying to make the jump in. We'll find Baboka now. So they'll head down to Baboka. Go after the Tiny first. Looks like we are going to have a it's buyback like from Joe Camp. Trying to just get back into the fight. It's JT now. Has also been caught out in the Omni. Though he'll get to the high ground of the Twin Gates. Baboka will jump back in. Looking for Chuen, but can't quite kill him off. Here comes Joe Cam now as they'll lose the Aegis on Akashi. Problem is Manet's dropping way too darn low. But he'll pop his own BKB now and go for the man fight. Finding Chuen on the Keeper. Can they keep Manet alive? He'll run towards the other side of the Twin Gates. And Talon, they're dropping like flies now. Maybe they've gone too far. But no, WS back on Manet. Gonna find the big target. They've lost four though on Talon. And it's literally just WS versus three. As Akashi does also fall to nothing to say. A very messy fight. But I believe G2IG will and truly come out on top. Oh, definitely so. It does cost them a buyback on JT. But that's the fight that we're looking for. <laughs> WS at least finds one more to go. But that's the fight we've been looking for from G2IG. And like, just find these opportunities against Talon. Picking off these supports, taking care of Ponyo before the egg can come in, taking care of Joe Cam, forcing the buyback to get the static storm off, not finding the angle. They isolate Akashi in a vacuum. Like that fight is just so scattered. Akashi's stuck in the middle of everyone. No one's taking attention away. WS is chasing off elsewhere. There's no egg coming out. Again, Ponyo just gets deleted early on. And without all that team fight control, that's where these issues come in for Talon. That's where the damage can just lay on to that focused Medusa. They've got the Repel, they've got Guardian Angel that just causes issues in that vacuum. There's only so much you can really hope for from your Timbersaw. He has to chase so many heroes down if you don't manage to get that AoE control down. Thirty-six minutes in now, twenty-three to twelve. G2IG is certainly showing signs of life here, though they are still fairly behind the side of Talon. Looking at Dota Plus, it's sitting at roughly 9% right now for G2IG. Not the, uh, not the greatest of odds here if you are a G2IG fan, but Talon's still sitting very, very pretty. The thing is, though, we talked about this before the game even started. These two teams are known for dragging out the games for quite a while. So we, we, you know, it could be one of those games. Where both sides will just keep just pushing out waves and not allowing anyone to go high ground again. You already see Monet, he has queued up that Divine Wraith here. He's ready for it. You know, that, <laughs> that kind of Divine, you can't underestimate it. No. Nope. You certainly can't. I mean, Lucent Beam is fun, but imagine if that was a sniper, Mike. Can you That's imagine? <laughs> on the Divine on Assassinate. Whoa. Goodness gracious me. Maybe in the really next game. This is really just the perfect item for uh, for Luna, right? Like with the level 20 talent on top, having the uh, the moon, moon glaive bounces off the Lucent Beam. It kind of such a stupid item. It is. I mean, it's such a fun item. I think it's it's the most fun item design we've gotten in a while. Well, certainly more fun than a uh, good old Wraith Pact. That's for sure. Don't, need, don't bring that crap off again, Chunt. Jesus. <laughs> you What? You didn't have fun with Wraith Pact, Mike? Oh boy, that gives me some nightmares, that item. My goodness. I didn't have fun with a Rage Pack Underlord? <laughs> 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 They're about to have some oh. fun. They found nothing to say. Nothing to say is definitely just dead here as he cannot uh, leave that static storm. Is now JT. Also on the run, WS is just going to chase him down, but. We're actually going right in. Oh, WS has no fear in the world. Just look at the damage he's dealing. Meanwhile, Gwen, he gets blown up with the eclipse. 
But Boker just tosses him in. They're still trying off this Timber Swap, but WS, he'll just do it himself. They can't deal with the Timber. Time to back out. He's Twins brought back, so is nothing to say, so is X-Nova. Akashi, he's Gosh. thinking about continuing. He wants to keep going by the looks of it. And he, he will. Here we go. He's got his Null Fire flying out. Not going to be too concerned about any of the saves. Not that JT's around anyway. WS is just a maniac. You've got to have that confidence to go through the gate blocking. Unfortunate that Chuen does get picked off by Bubuka. Great spot for the toss back there. But it's it's really WS that's the issue. And the funny thing is, your hero to deal with J with WS is JT on the Omni. It's the repel. It, it's got to be the repel and the pure damage coming out. It's just, it's not safe for JT. He's so focused down by WS. And now when he shows up, there's a nullifier on Akashi. To simplify that for WS, he's not going to be as scared of that repel as he once was. Two racks advantage now for Talm off the back of that play. But it's such a risky move as well with that buyback in Shuen. They'll still try though. Here we go. <laughs> the banner. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's something, all right. Into IG. Looking for the defense. Oh, the toss. Boca, toss back. He's found Akashi with that. It could be the target they really need to start on. Akashi already almost out of mana. Still trying to run with the disperser. Might make it out, but no, he's so low on mana. He just needs to keep running, but the blast off will lock him down. Still, the fight continues. WS in the middle of all this. Oh. Going after Manet. Takes him down with him. You, you get rid of the Medusa, but WS is the real carry jump. This man just does not give a crap. No, he doesn't. He's in so much work. He's putting Talon on his back, finding these openings, making it worthwhile. He managed to chip down the tier three tower to a pretty good point for the next shove in. Try to slowly work their way onto those mega creeps. Akashi just a little bit too far forward. Again, Boboka finding these great toss backs to give these opportunities for G2IG to keep this game going. Losing Monet puts a big dent in the plans here for G2IG. They can't capitalize to try to shove out. They can't gun for these tier twos without that Luna. They can't they can't hope for Roche. It's still a minute until the respawn. At very least, both sides will be fully up for that next Roche fight. G2IG needs to repeat the success they had in the last Roche fight this time around. With all of the buybacks committed from both sides, it's a risky position. Roche is gonna be all in for both of them to kind of look for the end game here. Lovely guess. What a maniac. I mean, he's playing Tim, but Johnny kind of goes with the, with the territory, you know? But he is really just crazy this game. And this is why you don't want to give this guy Tim the sword. Like, he, he is just a bit too comfortable when it comes to this hero. But performing it pretty much every time I've watched it. Yeah. So, Talon, I mean, the one, one lane away from just having Mega Creeps up. Dota Plus still giving G2IG a 3% chance of making a comeback in this game, which I think is a fair number. It's a, it just feels like every fight, it's all up to Boboka to get a nice toss back on somebody. And even that last fight, it, it felt like they barely killed off Akashi. Yeah, they had to expend a lot. And it just comes down to how these how, how these drafts work. Like for G2IG, there's a lot less teamfight control. You're hinging off of really good rolling thunders from nothing to say and the toss backs. For Talon, it's just much more forgiving. You have Static Storm, which you will have the Ag soon here for Joe Cam as well. I believe it's flying in with a courier. So you don't you won't have the BKB save left, although Repel should still save if JT's outside. Um let's see if G2IG can make something off of the smoke. Unfortunately, a longer Roche respawn as well. Two minutes twenty. Not gonna be able to try to sneak away a Roshan here, but they can set the mines, they can set the position up. Maybe try to bait Talon into another rough fight here. I mean, Roshan is going to be the uh, the location of this next fight, perhaps. I mean, it's still two minutes away. Talon are making their way over as well. More than happy to oblige. In goes WS, already getting so much information for his team. And look at Manet just melting to the damage of WS. Cool. He's already lost half his HP. Here comes Akashi. Tossback is there though, but Boka was oh, waiting for the Static Storm. Storm to lock them down. And WS just shreds them. They just put them in the grinder. 
Oh my goodness. I mean, it's just, what do you do? Manet's gonna fire back. He's gonna try. Akashi's low on mana. Akashi? But can they deal Ooh. with him? Akashi's Ooh. manning up. He'll run Ooh. away now. But JT. JT, enough to say they will secure the Medusa kill. Problem is, can they really keep the fight going? They are trying. Manet, he's on to Chuen. He'll take down the Keeper of the Light. It's only WS versus the world now. But WS may just be enough to do it on his own. Or is he? Three versus one. WS is still just oh manning God, up. No just way. look at this guy. There's oh, no way. My There's goodness. no way. What the WS. hell? What an absolute giga chap. He doesn't care. What the hell? Mane just died back. It was a 3v1. <laughs> He's insane. What? what the hell did WS have this morning? Oh my god. That that is just that's just monstrous. Oh. That, I, no words, no words. That that just speaks for itself. Really great openings found by G2YG and Talon. You know, Jokam gets that big static storm to force out the buyback. But WS sets all of that up by himself. Finds these openings. Great toss back from Boboka, putting Akashi in a really bad spot once more. But what do you do about this Timbersaw? We, we talked about JT being the counter, but even the pure damage doesn't seem to matter to this guy. I just don't know what you do. I just don't know what you do. It really does feel like the Timbersaw is just uncontrollable this game. And Roshan now going to spawn up. Still down to the, uh, the bottom right side of the map, but it will make its appearance very, very soon. And with that talent, they'll have first dibs on the next Roshan. Yes, you're still seeing that replay carry on. Like, it's just been that long oh, of a yeah, replay geez. that we're watching. What a maniac. And they'll get Roshan off the back of that, too. That's, that's insane for it. Like, they'll still find Rosh. Talon lose out a lot. They work that fight. WS just plays with full confidence. And they'll find Rosh for their trouble. Secondary life for Akashi. Free Ags as well. So you've got the Mystic Snake bouncing around. That turns people into stone, more control, more utility, cheese up for WS. Not that it feels like he even needs that at this point, mind. Has that safety net. Talon, 32 to 19, 24k up. G2IG. They, they need to finish up on Monet. Just get the swift blink. Get the divine. Play around with your beautiful Conda and Lucent beam combo once the divine's up. Nothing. Nothing. Say was so close. Very close. That 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 shards of Joe Cam. I know you pointed this out earlier, but he has been doing so much work with that damn thing. It's just so hard to to try and get in positions where you can set up when Joe Cam's just placing these damn thunder strikes all over the place. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Radiant's bottom tower. It, it just. A it's a great right? counterpoint to the techies, right? It it just makes it so hard. I mean, it's, it's much more closer. It's not as wide a map to get that info, but it's been doing so much work for Joe Cam. But he just keeps, he continuously just places it in the tree lines everywhere they go. Yeah. And Baboka is just like having to play like this chess match with Joe Cam as to where the, the Thunder Strikes are going to be. Here we go again. Ooh. Baboka gets scouted immediately. As we say, it, WS jumps in. Baboka forced the BKB through. Oh, the mines? Does get the no. toss back, but WS, he's more than happy to Wind Waker away. Way. Meanwhile, nothing to say has popped the rolling thunder, but I think they're hoping that everyone from Talon just runs into the mines. That's really all they've got. The problem is the person doing it is WS, and he's more than happy to tank through this damage. They oh, cost him now. Is it enough? Oh, they got the WS, damage. they blow him up. They've got him. But the buyback is there. WS is in cover. Meanwhile, nothing to say. Locked down by the stone gate, still rolling away, but now the egg will stun him up. He's in huge trouble. He'll still get out of there, though, just barely. Akashi looking for the final lane of barracks. Joe Camp will get a glimpse back. They'll find JT with that one, but there's no backup. Here come the Megas. Ooh. It just takes so much. It had, it was half the minefield. It had to come in to kill off WS. Maybe the minefield sign is actually the counter here, huh? Toss back with minefield sign? That could be it. I mean, if they could farm that. Maybe. 
I've, I've found that item a few times, Sean, let me tell you, it, uh, it hasn't helped me. <laughs> Bakashi? Toss back onto Akashi. This could be a big deal if they can find the Medusa one more time. The problem is the Aegis is going to mean they have to find him that second time. And WS, he's still just frontlining, just taking no damage. Akashi. One of the T4 towers, he knows he's safe because WS is just casually jumping in onto Monet every single time he sees him. And just removes half his HP on his own. Ancient exposed, Akashi still under attack here from Baboka. The oh. toss back though is not going to be on the Medusa. It'll be on nothing to say. Nothing to say, trying desperately to survive, but he is gone. The buyback is there. Still onto the Ancient, they go. Now JT in trouble. JT dying to boot. He'll buy back as well. Onto Monet, they go. The Luna just stuck between a rock and a hard place. She'll try to run, but WS is there just to cut her off. JT will die back. X Nova is gone. He'll buy back immediately. Monet is still in huge trouble. And Monet is down. Call it, boys. It's over. Oh my god. Talon will take game number one. And I'm just going to say it. WS carried the